Now, we are going to give the floor to the first presentation of the afternoon. Karim and Mohammad Hamawye, architects uh, based in Lebanon. Mohammad is the director of the Center for Islamic Architecture and Art of the Lebanese American University. Hello, Alejandro. Thank you very much for being with you. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Bien, disculpen, parece que estamos teniendo otra vez. I'm really sorry. It seems that we're having some technical problems. We can't seem to show the presentation. Now it seems to be on. Remarkable cultural artifact that a human possesses. It's a myth and superimposed an image of the past, of cultural identity and historical continuity, an image of the present and an image of hope and expectation for a future that can be. Architecture had always functioned in this manner from the very beginning of time. However, in our current times, this no longer is the case. While architecture still reflects our current lives and claims to lead us into a better future, it has lost its connection to the past, to tradition and its history. Materialism and appearance have become the norm in architecture. Newness, progress and originality has become the governing standard. Contemporary architects and urban planners in their practice have moved away from the traditional path and have resorted to expressing their own ideas, beliefs and feeling, which has manifested chaos in our cities. Due to the profit-driven investment strategies, quick and efficient building technique, and the preference for the new fashionable trends, our city are losing their identity and connection to history at an alarming rate. The question here becomes, has modernity secured us a better lifestyle? What kind of a newly planned urbanism is possible without the tried and tested method of the past? What future is there without the past? The constant search for innovation has led to repetitive solution and the quest for uniqueness in design have led to similarity instead. It seems that modern society have replaced repetition with the old with repetition for the new. What modern society fails to realize is that the less selfish we are in our practice, the more connected we become to nature and to our surrounding built environment. We have witnessed in the past under years, a drastic change in the way we practice the formation, restoration, and growth of our built environment. It seems that the theory have override practice. That new movement have enforced guidelines that opposes the natural and traditional way of doing things. The idea of the functional city and the dwelling as a machine for living introduced at the Congre International d'Architecture Moderne in the 1920s have led to laws that affected our practice and educational system. The Athens Charter in the 1930 that deals with the restoration of historic monuments and allowed the use of modern technique and material in the restoration work. Then the Venice Charter with its guideline for conservation and restoration of monuments and sites that represents a modernistic view and breaks the natural growth of our traditional communities. Our project, the regeneration of Jadda al-Balad, is an attempt to restore the scar that is the result of several decades of modernistic intervention. I will now hand over to my son Karim, who will explain the project in further detail. In Arabic, the word Jadda means grandmother. The burial site of our collective grandmother, Eve, is located just east of the historic district of El Balad. The coastal port city of Jeddah is located in the Mecca province of Arabia, surrounded by the Hijaz Mountains to the east and the Red Sea to the west. Site excavations in the old city suggest that Jeddah was founded as a fishing hamlet in 1522 BC by the Yemeni Qada tribe who left central Yemen to settle in Mecca. Under the Caliphate of Uthman in 1644 AD, Jeddah gained recognition as the gateway to the holy city, 
and developed as an important hub for the Islamic world. During the 7th century, the Persians settled in the city and constructed the first city walls and established the harbor as a prominent trading point. Al-Balad as we know it today is a wonderful example of the Red Sea's architectural tradition, a construction once common to cities on both sides of the sea. These coastal settlements are characterized by their magnificent coral stone tower houses, decorated by large wooden roshan built by the elite merchant class, as well as masajid, ribats, souks, and barhat that together compose vibrant traditional communities. Over the past half century, Jeddah has undergone many immense alterations in its urban fabric, building character, and land use. Until the mid-20th century, urban growth was limited within the fortifications surrounding Al-Balad. Unfortunately, the historic wall was demolished in 1947, resulting in a period of large-scale modern urban sprawl. Broad roads such as Al-Dahab Street cut across the city, scarring and fragmenting the historic urban fabric. Many historic buildings on the waterfront have been demolished and replaced by high-rise commercial and office buildings, eliminating Al-Balad's historic connection with the seafront. The remaining district of Al-Balad, which houses around 600 historic buildings, was listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2014. In 2019, the Saudi Ministry of Culture launched an urban regeneration project with the aim of reviving the historic core of Al-Balad. A consortium of both local and international consultants was formed, including urban planners, architects, restoration specialists, engineers, traffic consultants, and landscape architects. The main challenge was not to only restore the old city, but to provide the greater metropolis of Jeddah with a much needed core. Our first task was to document the various building typologies, construction techniques and building crafts of the area. After almost a year long period of studies and documentation, our second task was to design the city's central piazza at Dahab Square. This prominent square was divided and lost after the introduction of the large road at Dahab Street in the 1970s. Many historic buildings were demolished to pave way for the new road, destroying the urban fabric and allowing for high traffic to cut through its center. Subsequently, the square has evolved from being a pedestrian-friendly gathering place to a crossroad on a major transit route. The proposal to regenerate the square involved restoring the existing Masjid Ma'mar, a prominent historic mosque, as well as restitching the divided urban fabric through a series of newly designed public buildings, while also maintaining a service access replacing the large road. Our approach of designing new traditional interventions in a place of high historic and heritage value was an essential decision made to re-establish the connection between the eastern and western parts of the city that was damaged by modern interference. The new interventions also serve as a model for the continuity of the traditional building community within the region, proving that the local building community's knowledge of crafts may be utilized not only in the restoration works, but also in the construction of new designs. The historic Masjid Ma'mar that lies on the intersection between Qabil Su and Ad Dahab Street is a pivotal landmark located on Ad Dahab Square. Its towering minaret can be seen positioned along the main axes of Qabil Su. Recent poorly executed restoration works and interventions on the mosque have downgraded its original function and appearance. The courtyard that functioned as a buffer between the Su and the prayer hall was removed and the vaulted lower level had become humid due to a lack of sufficient ventilation. Along with the restoration of the mosque, we have proposed an extension to the main building, reconstructing the large internal courtyard, adding an additional prayer space overlooking the courtyard, 
and an ablution space. The vaulted lower level of the mosque will be accessible through the courtyard. The extension also provides an upgraded street frontage, a well-defined main entrance opening up to the public square and integrates small shops opening up to the main suit route. Four new buildings have been designed, learning from the same local architectural character, construction techniques and building crafts. Situated on site surrounding the public square, the interventions mend the void caused by the wide road, re-establishing the continuity of the urban fabric and giving the piazza a sense of place. The proposed buildings will serve as a covered marketplace, a visitor center, a traditional cafe and a juice kiosk. The new service road would be much narrower and would wind around the newly proposed buildings, giving the priority to pedestrian circulation. Traditionally, the materials and construction techniques native to these Red Sea communities is a composite structural system made up of a series of thick mangabi coral stone walls and lime mortar and is reinforced by strips of timber every four to six courses. The mangabi coral stone, being a porous material, is usually covered with a thick layer of lime plaster to protect it from erosion, especially being so close to the seafront. Fenestrations are usually decorated with various forms of roshan and mashabiya that reduce the intensity of the sun's rays entering the interior, allowing for the flow of air to ventilate the space as well as provide privacy for the inhabitants. The new buildings are to be constructed using the same materials and construction techniques traditionally used, however with minor innovations that optimize the construction efficiency and enhance the durability of the building's elements. Traditionally, the Mangabe coral stone would be mined as a rough boulder with inconsistent edges. With the help of industrial machinery, the Mangabe coral stone is extracted from the same quarries and is cut into standard block size in a factory. In the case of arches, the stone vouzoise and keystone may be cut in a wedge shape in order to be laid in a tidy manner. This process of stone cutting is beneficial for the ease and efficiency of transporting the materials to the site. It is easier to handle while being laid and it reduces the quantity of mortar consumption during construction. The wooden members have also been given enhancements to improve durability and neatness during construction. Traditionally, the timber elements would be placed overlapping one another at the corners of a wall. This led to untidy stone courses. The layer of wooden reinforcement now interlock at the corner pieces in order to maintain a consistent level of stone courses. The timber elements are kiln dried and are coated with waterproofing and termite repelling membrane to ensure longevity. The lime plaster that is applied to the wall as a finishing after construction is also enhanced with a water resistant aggregate. Applying a traditional design approach within the core of Al Balad strengthens the continuity of the historical urban fabric and allows for reinterpretation of the existing traditional forms within new building typologies and design solutions. Additionally, the use of traditional construction techniques and materials supports the local crafts and building practice. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mohammed and Karim. Wonderful presentation and such a beautiful project. I would like to apologize to those who are following along this event in Spanish because apparently there had uh, some sort there was a problem with the translation that was corrected so if someone has disactivated the translation they can just uh, use it again because it's working as it should I'm going to now use um, English so I hope you'll 
you allow me uh, speaking first in in Spanish um, we are we are going now to have uh, a session of questions and answers so everyone is uh, welcome to to send their their questions through uh, the chat which is available for for this it's uh, in the uh, lower lowest part of your screen uh, below the below the streaming frame you can send by this uh, place your your questions while while the questions arrive uh, mohammed um, please let us know how is the um, the project evolving in what in what, in what the stage this is currently yeah, thank you, Alexandro. Alejandro. First of all, this project didn't start uh, last year. We had one year of studying the whole site. So we have spent time to understand the city, its history, its growth, its building technique, and architectural elements. And after that year of compiling data, and not only starting by ourselves, but starting with previous architects and urban planners, with the ministry and the municipality, we have compiled all the necessary data to, un to able to understand the whole process. Now, uh, afterward, we have given the task to design the center of the the center of the city, which is the Dahab Square, and uh, the, the proposals that we have to do a visiting center, a cafe to with it, and uh, at the same time to do a pavilion and a, a, a kiosk cafe, and uh, the mosque was very important. It was a very prominent uh, element in the piazza. But unfortunately, due to a lack of conservation, uh, the courtyard of the existing mosque was demolished, and it, the mosque turned its back to the piazza. So what we had to do is to, first of all, to reconstruct the piazza, have the main entrance from the piazza to the mosque and add services to the mosque. And so the whole structures, the four structure with the mosque uh, and the winding of the road, uh, because we wanted to stitch the east and the west part uh, of the old town. Uh, that's basically how we have gone through the project. So in giving, coming back to your question, the, uh, and now it's been commissioned to a contractor to do the job. Uh, it'll be hopefully and within a year finished, and we will keep you updated with the construction process. Thank you, Mohammed. Also, uh, another question that that we have received is um, how how do you um, how apart from the details you have already explained how other um, updates you, you have had to introduce in the traditional building techniques? Let me say, uh, because we are speaking about the traditional uh, way of thinking, we had problematics uh, with the group of people and at the same time with the whole community to design new structure in the traditional way. And that's basically what we're trying to struggle to say, that in history, uh, new buildings are in tune with the old buildings and refined from the old construction technique. Uh, some of the uh, questions for us during uh, the design process is why we have to design using the old material and the old technique. And that's what we wanted to say. I mean, Jeddah now, the way we have seen it, as a, those are buildings that have stood for almost 700 years. And it will be a bit uh, inadequate to design building uh, with what they suggest as modern material, which is concrete and steel, would only uh, be, uh, I mean, deteriorated within 70 years. So still the old building are going to survive, whereas the new building that we're trying to implement uh, will be long gone before the other will be destroyed. And we were pursuing this idea of trying to say that not only um, old material, natural material 
have to be only used for restoration of old monuments, but also to be used in new pro uh, uh, building. And that's basically a first, and uh, not only in our region, but in the rest of the world, where they advocate the use of the uh, new material. Uh, hopefully, this will be an example for the rest of the world. And uh, for us to see how things are going to go with this will be generating uh, uh, the craftsmen and the builders to be acquainted with the traditional way of thinking, which we have lost just recently. I mean, 70 years is nothing compared to our humanity. And eventually, uh, the whole economy of the, uh, of the area will be reboosted by those uh, builders and artisans who have done lovely of jobs in the last uh, centuries. Thank you very much, Mohammed. I hope, I hope it becomes a, a model for many other communities. I have another, another question, which is by several people, Inigo Coveta, Francisco Castilla, they are asking if uh, the crass people that uh, are needed for this uh, project can still be found in the area, or uh, otherwise, how do you use to, to solve uh, this uh, problem? Yeah, actually, we, we're lucky in our area, the Gulf and the Mina area, that still the artisans and the builders exist. It's the, the problem is basically the, the architect and the architectural community who have turned their back to those people who, have, who are tooling silently uh, in history and teaching from a master to his disciple the way of building material and the crafts. And we still have them in the area. It's only a matter that those builders and craftsmen, they're not tuned with the modern technology. They don't have websites. They, they're, they're not exposed properly, uh, neither by the local community nor by the media. And that's basically what you're doing uh, yourself in Spain with the Intpau Spain and Intpau Portugal, that you're giving those people their right platform to stand and and say what they can do. Uh, but no, we, through our practice in the area, we have assimilated the number of craftsmen and builders who do their job fantastically. And basically, when we understand the way they're speaking, then we'll be, we're using the same language. And uh, it's at that time where the architect is in the back seat, and it's the builder and the craftsman who do their job. We, we are basically like the head of orchestra that we try to put all those things beautifully together and not to be selfish and egoistic to say, I did the job. Uh, the problem with our modern world is that people search who did it uh, rather than how it was done. And this is an example that when architects are less selfish about doing things, then he would be understanding to work with the community, with the builder, with the craftsman, and to uh, gain back the tradition that we have lost uh, 100 years back. Thank you very much, Mohammed. Uh, we have here another interesting question uh, from Sukala Association, which is um, if uh, in, this, in the context where you are working in, uh, the, the, the cost uh, difference of, of uh, building traditionally or uh, building with industrial materials um, prevents uh, other people uh, from using uh, traditional uh, techniques or, or, or this is not a problem in this case? Well, uh, let me dissect the, the question. Because when we are speaking about the traditional construction, first of all, we have to speak about the availability of material. And uh, since traditionally uh, communities and builders have used the material which is basically is within their reach, within their area. So the availability of material is very important. And in this case of Jeddah, they're, where they're using coral stones, 
uh, in other places it's a mud brick and others it's timber if they're in the forest. So there is no problem of availability of material. And at the same time, the cost of the raw material because it's under our, our feet. Now the problem is, uh, the question is how to work with those materials. Tra tradition have taught us uh, that uh, through centuries, those uh, builders have acquainted themselves with their building uh, construction. Uh, in the case of Jeddah, it's not extremely seismic, but still there is some earthquake that happened. That's why the use of timber every three to four courses of stones and uh, the use of uh, lime plaster, the use of um, the covering material, which was all natural. So in, in principle, it's not the material which is uh, affecting the shift of using the, the traditional way of construction to the modern way of construction. The question is that through modernism, first of all, we turned our uh, way to the past, and we have ruled and give different guidelines of how things are to be done. And uh, concrete and steel was uh, I mean, thrown to us as a, a way of having progress in our, the way we deal with our lifestyle. So people have rejected those material and turned their back to the builders and craftsmen. So they became less uh, there in the market. Uh, it's the only way that, uh, so with, when you're coming to introduce the builders in those building uh, designs, it's the scarcity of the builders and that makes that people are not shifted to the traditional way of doing things. Uh, so it's the uh, the human, uh, the uh, the skilled labor which is expensive, rather than the peop the contractor who works with concrete. But in terms of building material, definitely the building material is much cheaper than to use concrete and steel. And we have to also uh, throw it at the test of time. It's concrete and steel will maximum go for 60 to 70 years, where those buildings have last minimum of 600 years. So we have to take this into consideration. Thank you very much, Mohammed. Uh, we have a, another question, again, related to the previous one, which is how um, engaged was the local administration with um, the recovery of uh, the architectural tradition in, uh, in, the, in the projects uh, like yours? Yeah. Um, first of all, uh, Jad al Balad is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So it's very tricky, uh, the way to deal with it. So we had no problem with the ministry and with uh, the client and uh, where, because it's a must to, to, to work with the same traditional material before uh, ECOMOS and uh, the charter that have been formed, they were forcing the use of new material, which is concrete and steel, into the renovation of projects. And that have made damages uh, during our past years because the natural material is a very flexible material. Uh, whatever uh, nature of the material, whether it's stone, brick, ram earth, and wood, uh, those materials are, are flexible material. The problem with concrete and steel that those are, it's a, it's, it's a rigid material and uh, doesn't allow any flexibility. Uh, so the question that, uh, with the change of how UNESCO is looking at the at the renovation of old buildings now has been, I mean, changed. Uh, the problem is still that they will look at, uh, they would rather use new material, which is concrete and steel, for new buildings. And this is basically where we had the, the problem, is that we're saying, we, uh, I mean, uh, we're not doing arches as a decorative element, it's uh, naturally, stone brick uh, to span, we have to do arches. And we, uh, if we're using concrete, why to do arches in the first place? It's not a sentimental uh, issue that we're using. And uh, with time, they understood it. Uh, the problem is, first of all, that architects are not trained to do uh, working drawing and that uh, matter. And uh, I mean, uh, our firm, myself, we've been trained for the last 30, 35 years 
uh, to do building with natural materials was quite easy for us. So uh, it's also the question of can the designer design and make detailing using natural materials? This is the first thing. And the second, like uh, the other question, uh, the first question, the previous one, is uh, do we find the right people? Actually, uh, working with natural material and with natural construction, architects do not go and spend, I mean, hundreds of pages of detailing uh, to do a building. In the past, uh, designer used to use a couple of buildings, just a very simple plan with dimensions and uh, a section and uh, a very simple elevation. And the process is on site. Now, what we see is designers from different continents sitting on their laptop, designing in another continent, and have to produce dozens of working drawing in order to, to, uh, to let the contractor, where he's working, to understand the way they want to do it. And most, mostly, most of the things are foreign to those contractors. So if you're working with an area where they only do concrete, you would have a new building technology that is allowing steel, plastics, and then contractors are confused. And it's not only the, the contractor is confused, is that the, the citizen and the people who live in the house are confused because they're seeing a uh, building uh, of different nature uh, that are growing in their own uh, backyard. Uh, so that's basically how uh, it is. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mohamed. Uh, there is another question here from Mateus, uh, who asks um, if uh, there was any opposition from other architects to your project. Well, actually, when you work in a historic site, there is no opposition by other architects because he who have the knowledge will come and work, and uh, the ministry and the client will, are open to the suggestion. It's the problem with the scarcity when you're doing a project in, uh, in a modern way. You'll see hundreds of people jumping, try to take the job. But when it's done in the traditional way, unfortunately, few have the capability of doing it. Because if you do uh, a wall not using the proper technique, the wall is just going to crumble, no matter how beautiful your drawing and your perspective are. Uh, in reality, things does not, not go this way. You have to have the technique and the, the capability and the know-how in order to do in such problems. So basically, competition is non-existent, not only in our part of the world, but in the whole world. I mean, people are not acquainted to design with traditional building technique. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, there is another question from Maria um, asking if uh, you work with the urban planners and landscape architects within your office or, or do you cover yourself these uh, areas also? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, in the past, uh, the people who design have a holistic understanding to the nature of Building. So an architect has to acquaint, be acquainted and have the feel of the urbanity of the place. And uh, the, I mean, I would rather speak of designers who have this know-how of the outside and the inside, the, uh, the dialogue between buildings. And so a designer as a person who is like in the uh, Renaissance, as a person who have this whole understanding. Unfortunately, our education system has classified us as designers. So you have an urban planner, you have an urban designer, you have an architect, an interior designer, and the landscape designers. And it becomes chaotic unless all those people who have deeply involved in that profession do understand each other. Uh, you don't want to put uh, an urban designer in conflict with the architect, nor you want to put an architect in conflict with the interior designer. Uh, so we have to understand how we speak with each other or have, let's say, in the same firm, all those body of people who work together, but definitely not have people fighting at the site who wants to be better than who and uh, without accomplishing anything. And that's, again, I'm, I'm referring back to tradition. 
tradition teach us that the people who are involved are really knowing of what they're doing and understand the whole process of building construction. Thank you. Thank you very much. One last question very quick, because we have only one more minute uh, from Sanjeev Singh, uh, who asks about uh, how could you, uh, how did you develop the, the structural uh, analysis and the structural design uh, using these uh, traditional building techniques? Yeah, uh, first of all, it's, I have to start by saying I don't know, not I know, because usually architects start the project by saying uh, we know everything. And then they're, I mean, focus in what they know, which is little, cons uh, looking back at tradition that has spent thousands of years back. So the question that I don't know is the right question to start your analysis. But you have to be tuned with the nature of how building are done in the past because buildings are not only uh, about technical uh, of work you have to understand the functionality and you have to also understand the beauty we should not uh, disregard beauty which is very important uh, the uh, difference between a building and a building although it's made with a natural material that you have a building made by a natural material which is ugly and another one which is beautiful so an ugly building like if you're using concrete, it's going to disappear with time. Also, ugly building, although they'll be used with stone, the inhabitants of the place are going to demolish it to, to have another buildings. But uh, uh, it's a search. And I think what you're doing in Enbao, Spain, and Portugal is an excellent example. And what your, uh, your colleagues are doing in Morocco is that you're getting people to train on site, I mean, an architect cannot be uh, trained behind the T-square or the computer uh, how to do things. He has to go at the site and be trained the proper way of doing things. Thank you very much, Mohammed. Wonderful discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much to all of you who sent questions for him. I'm sorry we cannot. Uh, um, present all your questions so we we have to make a selection with those which are more general less uh, specific uh, but hopefully we, we will be able to to address all all your questions after the conference to to Mohammed if, if you have uh, any other uh, details details that you would like to know thank you Mohammed thank you very much thank you thank you Alejandro